Welcome to Supernatural Life. My name is Patricia King and I'm serving you as your host today on a subject that I just really, really love. Anything to do with love, I love. <laughs> and this is about the supernatural power that flows through love. And with me, I have a good friend and comrade, mm. Matt Sorger from Matt Sorger Ministries. It's wonderful yes. to have you with us again. Uh, Patricia, it's always, <laughs> always great to be with you. Yeah, we've had some fun times together oh, in yeah. the glory and in the Lord. But this subject just mm. touches my heart because mm -hmm. I, you know, God is love. Mm -hmm. I mean, it says in the word, God is love. Yeah. And so love is one of the most important subjects, I believe, mm -hmm. in the whole Bible, mm -hmm. right? So I love talking about it. So how how is God's love connected to his supernatural power? Because you um, are known to move in a lot of supernatural power. Yeah. You've seen um, healing miracles, deliverances, mm -hmm. glory, manifestations, and those are all wonderful. Yeah. But, but how is love connected to it? Yeah. So... I go from the scripture in Galatians chapter 5 that says, faith worketh through love. Now, I have read, I've read this in different translations, and I love how the Amplified Bible expounds on it. It says this, it says, faith works through love or is activated, is set into motion, um, and, and accomplishes through love. Wow. <laughs> so it's really a very amazing revelation that, you know, many times when we think of healing ministry or we think of the power of God, we think of faith. You know, faith is what brings a miracle. But really the secret source of power behind faith, and I look at it as like the battery and the, the, the power charge within the battery. So faith is the battery, but the power charge within it is love. Wow. So love is what sets faith into motion. Wow. Love activates faith. Love propels faith, which then releases the power of God. Wow. Now, can faith be released without love? I, well, I think the ultimate, I mean, people can operate in a gift of faith, right? So the gift of faith is, it's an endowment from the Holy Spirit, and it can for sure set the power of God into motion. But one thing I know is that when you have the pure love of God, it's not just activating His power, but it's also demonstrating His heart. Come on. Yeah, and showing, revealing, not just the hand of God, but the heart of God. And, and I think that's what we really want. Not just, you know, here's the hand of God and this is what God is doing, but here's the display of His heart along with that. Because as we're ministering um, the goodness of God, mm -hmm. it's all connected to His love. Everything He does for us is in love. So as ministers of His gospel, when we understand love and we, we have faith operating within mm -hmm. that love, then we're truly going to see the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. truly going to see it. Now, there's a lot of things that are happening out in the world today mm -hmm. that are the opposite of love. It's hate. Yeah. Yeah. And we need some power released mm -hmm. to change things in the world today. Yeah. But I don't think that's going to happen without demonstrations of love. Yeah, no. It's not a matter of just conversing with one another and saying, well, I've got the right answer. No, I've got the right answer. No, yeah. I'm the right. You're wrong. Right. That's not going to do it, no matter who's right. Right. It's like if there's no love, it's not going to yeah, accomplish right. anything. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. Well, how is love even greater than our faith or lack of faith? Mm -hmm. And uh, you have an example um, uh, to share, actually, because you experience God's love and how it actually produced a miracle. Yeah, this is really interesting because, you know, uh, you know, when you're raised in miracle ministry or healing ministry, many times you are taught that the key is faith. And, you know, if the person has to have faith or you have to have faith, and if there's no faith, a miracle can't happen. But I've discovered something in God that He breaks our formulas. Right. And, and His love is even greater than our lack of faith. Yeah. And, and I'll share a moment where I saw this. Um, I was in a service, and we were praying for folks at the altar, and there was a woman sitting down about halfway back. And I remember the Holy Spirit said to me, go pray for that lady. And I started an internal conversation with God. I said, God, I don't think she wants prayer because she's sitting down. She's not here. She's not up at the front. And God said, go pray for her. So I said, okay. So I went back to pray for her. And when I got over to her, I said, can I pray for you? And she looked up at me and she said, no, I don't want you to pray for me. And I turned to God and I said, God, I told you <laughs> she did not want prayer. Remember, I have the gift of discernment. <laughs> but then God said, pray for her. And I looked at her again. I said, can I pray for you? And she was angry. And she said, no, I don't even want to be in this church service tonight. My husband made me come here. God doesn't love me. God doesn't want to heal me. Aww. And then she starts, all this stuff started coming out. She was depressed. She was angry. She said, I've had everyone pray for me and I'm still sick. God doesn't want to heal me. 
and she starts listing all of her sicknesses. And I had never heard of anyone having so much wrong with them. So again, I heard the Holy Spirit say, pray for her. So I asked her again, I said, can I pray for you? And she stood up, she said, fine. She stood up, she crosses her arms, she, she plants her arms and she says, fine, pray for me. And she just stares at me like this. So now, after she had gone through this long list of everything wrong with her, I'm going to be honest with you. Whatever faith I had to pray for it her was, drained. was gone. <laughs> no, it was totally gone. I'm, at, the more she talks, the more I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you're right. This probably is not going to work out well for you. You know? And so whatever and you'll faith... you'll be on it as one more person on her <laughs> list, right? Say, I've had everyone pray for me. <laughs> and that's all good. No, but, but I thought... Yeah, this is pretty hopeless, this situation. My faith was not high in this moment after hearing what was going on in the natural. So I closed my eyes and I started to pray in the spirit. And two things happened to me in this moment. So as I closed my eyes, because I have to get my, my focus off of the depression, sure. the anger, the lack of faith, the, the, the sickness, I had to get off of that and onto God. So I start praying in the spirit and I instantly see this brick wall right in front of me. And I know it's, it's everything that we're facing right here. But as I'm praying in the spirit, two things happen. Number one, in my vision, I start to go up the wall. This was really interesting. And I look up and I see the top of the wall. So I go up, 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 and I look over the wall. The moment I look over the wall, everything becomes clear to me. Now, the second thing that happens is as I'm going up from my belly, I start to feel this rising of love on the inside wow. of me. And I know it was not my own love. Because in the natural, if someone's yelling at you right. and someone's angry, it's you not going to... You just want to exit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not going <laughs> to elicit feelings of love for the person. But it was God's love in me. And I could feel how unconditionally and perfectly God loved this woman mm. in the depths of her pit. God loved her so much. And, and well... I see over the wall and then I hear the voice of God. And this is where discernment comes in with healing ministry. And God spoke to me. He said, she doesn't need healing. And I said, say what? He said, she doesn't need healing. She has an affliction of infirmity in her life. She has a, she has a demonic affliction, a spirit of infirmity, take authority over it and command it to leave. Cause everyone had been praying, healing, sure. healing, healing, healing. No one ever said spirit of infirmity, leave her. So suddenly this all became clear. This amazing love was in my heart for her. And I looked at her and I said, in the name of Jesus, I didn't even tell her it was demonic. I just looked at her and I spoke right to her. I said, in the name of Jesus, infirmity, leave her body now. The power of God hits this lady. Wow. She's on the floor. She's laughing. She's crying. She's Aww. laughing. She's crying. She's having a glorious encounter with God. Aww. She gets up. All the pain is gone from her body. Oh, wow. And as she's <laughs> weeping you, in front of me, she says, not only is all the pain gone, but I feel God again. Oh. I have felt spiritually dead for five years and I can feel wow. his presence again. Wow. And God made her alive again. And it was right in connection with his love wow. that moved beyond her faith, moved beyond my own faith, gave me clarity in the spirit and released his power. Oh, for that's so beautiful. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I know that in the Bible, when we read about Jesus ministry, it'll say, and he was moved with compassion. Mm. So it was like it moved him. The love of God moved him, you know, and uh, Paul said that 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 he was compelled by love. Yeah. Right. So there's yeah. it's a great power. Mm -hmm. And when you when you feel God's love for someone, it's so beautiful, mm. isn't it? Mm. It just is so uh, tender and yeah. beautiful, but in it is a faith to see them healed. So yeah. that's awesome. You also have a story about um, someone healed of cancer, I believe, right? Oh, we were in a service. This was um, in our ministry. My parents were with me on this trip. And so I was praying for folks in the meeting and my mom was sitting and dad was sitting on the front row. They carried a woman in with bone cancer. She couldn't even walk herself. She was like a skeleton. Aww. And they carry this lady in, sit her on the front row next to my mom. And I'm over here praying for someone. And I see my mom during the service. She just leans over to this lady and wraps her arms around her and holds her. And I see her speaking into her ear. And I'm thinking, oh, she's praying for her or something. Well, I'm over on the other side of the church praying for someone. And I hear a commotion up at the altar. And I turn around and I'm like, what is going on? This woman who's carried in, like a skeleton. I see her jumping up and down at the altar, throwing her arms around, kicking her legs up in the air and yelling, I'm healed, I'm healed, wow. I'm healed, Jesus healed me. And then she's just beside herself and she's like, my son. 
He dropped me off tonight. He's in the car in the parking lot. I have to go tell him that Jesus healed me. And this woman carried in. She runs right past me down the center aisle of the church, out the front doors of the church. I never even got her name. She runs out of the church to tell her son that Jesus healed her that night. And I, and I asked my mom, I said, Mom, what happened? She said, Matt, she said, I don't know. I just had this overwhelming desire to hold this woman and hug her. And as I held her, this love rose up in me. And all I was doing was speaking Whoa. scripture into her ear. By his stripes, you are healed. By his stripes, you are healed. And then all of a sudden, she jumped up, healed. Wow, a hug ministry a hug. that releases the, the love. love of Jesus. Yeah, just beautiful, just beautiful. And your mm. mother carries so much love in her she, too. She, she just really is does. amazing. Yeah, um, you and I both had the privilege of mm. sitting with Dr. Oral Roberts mm -hmm. before he passed. Yeah, but when you were um, spending your time with him, yeah, he he imparted something to you, some understanding about love. Yeah, he did, and. I remember, you know, we had question and answer time. Yeah, we had those right. opportunities to, to sure. talk with him. And I was with him four months before he passed. So my question to him was, Dr. Oral Roberts, what was one of the keys for your miracle ministry? What was one of the keys why you saw so many miracles? And he looked at me and he said, you know, he said, a lot of people will think it was because of my faith. He said, and I was a little surprised that he said this. He said, you know, I've never even prayed for faith. He said, I read the Bible that says everyone's been given a measure of faith. So I just believed I had faith because the Bible said I had faith. So right. I never even prayed for faith. I just believed I had it. He said, and we started the campaigns and we started the tent meetings and we saw some miracles. We saw some. He said, but then I would be in my hotel room before a tent miracle crusade. And I started to pray in a very specific direction. He said, I started to pray for God's love. I started to pray that I would love the people the way God loves the people. So he said, I would go into the meetings then as I was praying this way, and I would feel so much love for the wow. people. He said, when that happened in my heart, the miracles exploded in the ministry and miracles just started happening uh, in a multiplied way. And so his private, his private prayer was for love and his public ministry exploded in miracles. Wow. I don't think many people know know that, Yeah. but that's a very insightful thing and mm. it's something that we can all uh, glean from as well, that love, love is the most powerful force in the universe and even where you see atmospheres of great miracles behind it is that love, so, mm. so beautiful. We're gonna take a break right now, we'll be right back. Welcome back to this awesome discussion on the love of God and how love is really what's behind the... of God being released is so so beautiful that's why I think Jesus said you stay in Jerusalem until you're endued with power mm. that's love power from mm. on high not mm. just the power to work miracles but the power of who God is mm. um, flowing through that we were talking uh, just during break time about the power of offense and especially in the day that we're living in right now mm -hmm. you know truly what the world needs now is love sweet love yeah and we have such um, an intense environment that we're living in. Yeah. There's so much hate, so mm -hmm. much cruelty and everything. Mm -hmm. And love 
is the power mm -hmm. that is going to break it. Yeah. It's not going to be more programs or, yeah. you know, uh, even government laws changing might be helpful in some ways, but it's yeah. not going to seal the deal. We yeah. have to have love yeah. in action. And yet even so many individuals deal with offense, yeah. you know, personal yeah. offense, and it blocks the love flow. But you have a teaching, right, yeah. on breaking yeah. the power of offense? Yeah, we do. We have a, we have a four-part teaching set that has really helped set people free, even from traumas that have happened in their life. And, you know, offense happens to everyone. If you live this life for any amount of days, uh, there will be an opportunity to be offended, whether it's a hurt that happens to you or something wrong that, you know, is done to you. It's so easy to be trapped in offense. And I think it's one of the greatest assignments of the enemy. He wants to divide and conquer. Yeah. The enemy wants to trap people in hurt, in pain, in trauma, and really keep them locked up in their past. Because as long as someone remains offended, it actually gets them stuck and, and locks them up in something that the enemy wants to lock them in. Um, and I think it's so important that we learn how to break free from offense and we learn how to forgive and to love. That's so good. I just encourage you to go on Matt's site and, and get that teaching. I think it'll really be helpful because there's not one of us that isn't going to be tested in our love. Yeah. You know, there's love tests all the time and there's such a temptation for offense. Mm -hmm. I remember, and, and I mean, of course, in ministry, we have lots of opportunity yeah. to pass mm -hmm. love tests. But this this one in particular was kind of a big one yeah. in that it was a well-known leader was coming against me and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, but all I had for this person was love. Mm. All I could ever feel for them was love. And I would even have friends saying what they've said about you and what's on the Internet about you and against you. You know, you should fight back. And I said, no, I'm just going to love. I said, mm. one day we are going to be best friends. One day yeah. we will because love is going to win this battle yeah. and I would just love on them I would honor them from the pulpit mm. I would send them gifts I would mm. just love 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 mm. love and sure enough it finally broke it didn't break overnight yeah and we want you to be patient you yeah. know because love never fails so mm -hmm. you just have to remain in it but um, yeah it, it broke and we are now really good friends wow. we minister together we laugh together we cry together mm. i mean it's a beautiful relationship that we mm. have but it was love that conquered it and wow. and i really believe that the restoration of that relationship or the coming together of that was a miracle yeah you know and it was love that produced the miracle yeah so whether it's relationship or healing of a body or whatever love is yeah. so powerful yeah you know patricia that's one thing that i could say i've always observed from you because we've known each other like 20 years right, now right i can't even believe it's been <laughs> yeah. 20 years you know Time we'll flies get, when you're having fun, yeah right? and we're getting younger and younger <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's one thing i've seen with you is the love that pours out of you it's even at times when god has had to call you to do hard things uh because your heart is so full of love god can trust you with certain things and and i think it, you've been a great example well, to the body you. in that Love is my greatest aim. I'm trying to learn to love, yeah. right? It Amen. says in 1 Corinthians 14 that we are to have love as our greatest goal, yeah. right? But even though there's spiritual gifts we can go after, love has to be the greatest goal. Yeah. And uh, that, that's what I'm trying. And I know that you are yeah. have that, you know, before you to live that out and you model it well as also. Mm. Um, why is love the greatest? Why is love so important in eternity? Hmm, Patricia, this is probably one of my greatest life revelations. Um, the Why is love the greatest? And why is it so important to God? You know what I've come to the conclusion? Everything in life, you know, God doesn't orchestrate bad things to happen to people. But when things happen in life that are painful, I've learned something. God has a great agenda. And it all comes down to this one thing. Have you learned to love? And right. I think when we get to heaven, now we have a mutual friend. Sure. And we were sitting at a lunch table once and he started to share from his personal life how his daughter, they were praying for her. She was in the hospital and she passed of cancer. Well, they all got around her and they were praying for her to come back. And she did. She came back. And when she came back, she carried a message from the other side. And she said, Dad, I saw Jesus. And this is what he said to me. He thanked me for how much I love him and how I worship him. And then he thanked me for the kind of mom that I was or that I've been. And then he thanked me for the people that I loved and for the ones I forgave, even though it was so hard to forgive yeah. them. I forgave them and he thanked me for loving them so well that I would forgive them the way that I forgave them. 
And as he shared this, tears were running down all of our yeah. faces. I remember <laughs> yeah. it. And I realized something that it really is true. And it's what Jesus said, the greatest of all, the greatest commandment is love God with all your heart, soul, strength, mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus revealed it to us right there, that what he is looking for and what God is looking for is how do we love other people even how do we love God and how do we love other people? So good. And I think we're going to be shocked when we get to heaven that, that the thing that is at the top of God's priority list for us is not just all the things we do, but, it's, but it really comes down to how do we love others? And even our friend Bob Jones, mm. when he had died and he had gone to heaven, I mean, he's in eternal glory now. Yeah. But um, earlier in his life, and he had been prophesying and everything, mm. but when he went before the Lord, the Lord didn't ask him, how well have you prophesied? Wow. He said, have you learned to love? Wow. And he had to say no at the time mm. uh, because he, he was not a kind person. He was not, wow. uh, he definitely was not a loving person at that yeah. point. And the Lord said, I'm going to send you back because you're going to learn to love. And then when wow. he finally passed into glory, he passed on Valentine's Day, which was really cool. It was almost like the Lord saying, you learn to love. And he really did love well. Wow. You know, we knew him, you know, in in the days before he passed. It was yeah. a, a very loving, giving person. It was wow. just beautiful. Mm. Well, what do you think? <laughs> Are you ready to love big? Are you ready to let Jesus fill your heart and love you so that you can love others? He wants that for you. We're going to take a break right now. We'll be right back to pray for you. Well, welcome back. Are you ready to love bigger than you've ever loved before? I hope so, because God is love and he wants to fill you with all that he is. Mm. Matt, we have a couple of questions from viewers. Uh, the first one is from Anna. And she asks, how do I forgive someone who has hurt me and love them, even if I still feel negative feelings toward them? That's a good question, right? That's a really good question, because I think sometimes we think if we forgive, then any negative feeling would just be gone. Uh, I have found forgiveness to be a process, you know, especially if it's been um, a deep hurt or a deep wound in you, in your soul or mind. Um, I found it to be a process. So really, number one, people need to know forgiveness is a choice. You can't wait till you feel like forgiving. Right. Number one, you do it out of obedience to God's word, but then you also make, you start with a free will choice. I choose to forgive this person. Even if you have to say it out loud in your prayer time, I choose to forgive so-and-so. Um, and then as you make that choice, I have found the greatest test of forgiveness is this. It's not just saying, Lord, I forgive them. But when you're praying for that person, can you pray for God to bless them and for good things to happen to them? Now, <laughs> I remember one time something had happened in my life and I just was so hurt by something. And I'm like, God, I forgive them. I forgive them. And then God said to me, well, pray that I bless them. And I'm like, I ain't going to pray for you to bless them, God. I want you to convict them. I want you to deal with them. <laughs> and God's like, no, pray for me to bless them. Pray my mercy on them. And I'm like, pray your, God, I don't want them to have mercy. I want, you know, <laughs> vengeance is discipline. mine. <laughs> <laughs> vengeance is mine, says the Lord. You know, I want vengeance, Lord. And he's like, no, pray. So as I began to pray like that, Lord, I pray your mercy on this person. Forgive this person. I bless, I, you know, at, at first it was hard to get the prayer out, but Lord, I bless this person. I pray good things for them. I found what we're talking about, love. All of a sudden, the love of God filled my heart for this person, and I really forgave them. But it was a process, wow. and there were choices involved. But as I pressed in, God gave me His love to replace all the other stuff that I was feeling. Right on. I love what you said, whether you feel it or not. Yeah. You have to choose to forgive. Yeah. And then the process of working it out will come. But God knows your heart when you choose to forgive. Yeah. Because Jesus gave some heavy teaching about forgiveness. Yeah. It was, it's really heavy yeah. uh, with the unforgiving servant. Mm -hmm. And here this, this man was forgiven of a big debt. Then he goes back and won't forgive another person their debt to him. 
And the master was so angry with him that he mm -hmm. threw him into jail and, and locked him in and said, you're going to stay there until the last penny of what you owe me is paid. Well, mm -hmm. how could he even go out and make money to pay it off? It's impossible then because he's in prison. But Jesus said then these very sobering words, so will the Heavenly Father do to you if you do not forgive from your heart. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow. Mm -hmm. We can never afford not to forgive, mm -hmm. so we can choose to forgive yeah. and then let the process come. And yeah. I love, that's a valuable key, yeah. you know, being able to have God just, you yeah. know, um, just pour it into you, you know, as you're choosing, you know, to bless, say, okay, I'm choosing to bless. God, you're going to give me the ability to even pray it, but it'll break something on the inside of yeah. you. Yeah, and when you feel negative feelings again, make a choice to forgive. Again, you just keep saying, I choose to forgive. And I also found that God's grace is there. His well-timed help just when you need it. So every time His love needs to flow, His grace is there to empower you to do what He calls you to do. Right on. It's so valuable. Yeah. Thank you so, Matt, so much, Matt, for all that you've imparted to us today. Mm -hmm. um, can you pray over our people? We only have just a few seconds yes. left, but I don't want them to go away without being imparted yes. to. Lord, I thank you today, right now, for every person watching. In the name of Jesus, Father, let your anointing flow. Let forgiveness flow. Let love flow. I pray, God, let your love saturate people's hearts today in a new dimension. Let them walk in the love of the Father and the love of the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus for themselves, for others, and for you, God. I pray today in Jesus' mighty name, and I declare over them, love will never fail. In Amen. Jesus name. And that's right. Love will never fail. If you want to live in a supernatural lifestyle, mm -hmm. love is at the top of the list. So go out and live that supernatural uh, life this week and we'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know how it impacted you. Send your feedback, testimony or prayer request today or ask Patricia a question for a future program. And don't forget, you can continue growing in the supernatural with our premium e-courses. Connect with us at god.tv Patricia and join us next time for our next episode of Supernatural Life.